All right, welcome. Uh, this is component development with Emulsify. Uh, basically, we're going to be talking a little bit about component development uh, using a tool called Emulsify, um, which uses Storybook. Um, I am Mark Casillas. I'm Drupal Tech Lead at Canopy Studios. I've been there for a couple years. I've been doing Drupal for a very long time. Um, I drink, and that's why most pictures of me have things. Uh, my Twitter handles are Team Poop and Drunken Drupal, and I recognize that neither one of them are very mature Twitter ha handles. <clears throat> I do work at Canopy Studios, and we are hiring uh, Drupal tech leads, Drupal developers. We're a great company, small, uh, really. Uh, it's a lot of fun to work there. I've been there for two years now, and am very happy about that. Um, I also am on the board for graymuzzle.org. Uh, some of the examples will be on, actually on their website. They, we are a, uh, a nonprofit that raises money to give money to uh, dog shelters that help older dogs get uh, adopted, yes. And that's my dog, Drew. She's my pal. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, just a little review of compo uh, what it, component development means, the how, the why, what atomic design is. Uh, we're also going to get started with uh, Emulsify. It has this nice little CLI that builds the theme for you. Um, and then we can review the folder structure on that. A um, little bit of uh, more into Emulsify, talking about Storybook, uh, what the BEM functionality that that adds to there, and how to attach libraries and, and whatnot, and tying that all into Drupal. I think I actually just used this one slide the entire time and just kept adding on to it. So, Please excuse to me. Uh, for Drupal, we just do a quick uh, composer create project, no install Drupal recommend project, and then the, the site name. That just gets you a local instance, pretty easy to do. Uh, for Emulsify, you use the CLI inside the Drupal structure, and it'll automatically uh, detect that it's using Drupal, and it will install your, uh, it'll install itself into the, uh, the custom uh, themes property, depending on what it is. It does an npm install already for you, so you don't have to worry about it, and then you init it. Um, no, that's that's all it does. Sorry. And then uh, I use Docsil for my local development. You can use whatever you want, um, you know, because I'm not going to argue with you about that. So why? Uh, Component development is really neat because uh, it takes on the life of uh, atomic design. And what that means is that all the elements of your front end are the same across the board. So if you have your, uh, a certain button feel that's going on with it, it's constantly the same. If you have the nodes that are in a certain template, they are all looking very similar. You don't have to worry about, oh, where did the CSS go come from? Or why is this in this area as well? Um, and it breaks it down into atomic design, which is, if you think of atomic design, it, it goes uh, atoms, molecules, um, templates, and pages. And Drupal is kind of already set up in that aspect of fields and nodes and paragraphs. And these are all their own little components that they're using. So why not use it uh, to uh, maintain the same systematic uh, stuff on there? Um, this is the... The very famous picture of Brad Frost, the guy that created, coined the phrase and wrote the book, uh, Atomic Design. And if you haven't read it, it's, it's a good read. Um, it's an easier blog post than a book in my mind, but uh, it's really good. Um, so you got the atoms, which are the smallest components. So you like your buttons, your fields, um, your textiles, things like that. And then you add a couple of atoms together and you get a molecule. And that molecule is something like a, a, a paragraph or a, a view area. And then organisms is where you stick them all in together to make the page layout, and then the templates and pages, and so on, and so on. Um, that's why I use atomic design. Uh, for Emulsify, we uh, use the CLI inside of a Drupal structure, and I think I did a screenshot of, of this instead, yeah. Um, so you, you go into uh, your, uh, your Drupal instance, you've downloaded Drupal, you've installed it, everything's happy, you want to create uh, it. it. Um, you download the uh, Emulsify, which I didn't insert the instructions on how to install Emulsify. It's actually one, actually, yeah, I did. It's the npm install globally Emulsify CLI, um, and that actually pulls in the CLI globally into your environment. And then you do uh, an emulsify init inside the uh, the browser window, or excuse me, in, inside there. 
and it does all this great stuff for you. It talks about some deprecation, warnings, but everything's cool. Um, oh, this is the init URL. Where's, where is? Oh, I'm sorry about that. After it init's, it actually pulls all the stuff in there. It actually ta takes into account what its own MVM file is, switches that to the proper version of Node, so they are all in the same version of Node, and then it installs everything like that. And then what you got to do is you have to uh, create a. Uh, if you point there, you, you do a system, and then you actually have to add the components. The good thing about the uh, the emulsify system using the CLI is it doesn't. When it first came out, it gave you all these default. Uh, uh, components for you that you had to deal with. And they didn't necessarily work all the time or they weren't necessarily what you wanted. Not that they didn't work, they just not what you wanted. And now you can actually use uh, the, your own systems. You can create your own, uh, but the base one that comes with it is called Compound. <clears throat> and that actually pulls in the structure here where it creates a repository for you. And it also makes sure that you use uh, Drupal components and Emulsify Twig. These are some of the libraries the, um, the PHP libraries that are going to be used as part of Drupal uh, on your install as well. Let's see, and I actually wanted to do an install or a review of it. So I've got this one here working already. This is actually the gray muzzle site that I put together. And um, oh, that's why it's not changing, because I was loading the wrong one. Ha! There we go. Thank you. Sorry, I was trying to make some changes today and they weren't working and I have a gray muzzle instance and then a gray muzzle nine instance and I was changing the gray muzzle instance but watching the gray muzzle nine instance. So I'm smart. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get out of there. I wanted to see that on there. Um, so this is actually what it looks like at the end. This is the gray muzzle nine one that, that I wanted to show you. And it has the buttons here. This is a, a, a thing called storybook. And this is what, how you can actually control. This is the, uh, the pattern library uh, that you use. Some people are used to Pattern Lab. A lot of people talked about Pattern Lab. I personally like Storybook a little bit better. It's a little bit cleaner uh, to me. Uh, but you can actually see what the buttons are looking like. You have controls here on the side that you can create. So you can actually change what the uh, buttons are uh, gonna do. And I can add text if I want to, just to make sure. And that's all done uh, real time in there. Um, if I'm looking at uh, a teaser here, here's a, what, what the blog teaser is going to be looking like. And uh, I can see how that looks like also in mobile, or with, well, with grid. And then I can see what it looks like in a small mobile as well. That doesn't look that great, does it? Because it didn't grid up. Um, so then we can actually go ahead and look at that and, and reset the viewport and then try to fix it. But this is what, uh, what it, it's trying to do. Um, Things that come in here, we got the storybook setups. Uh, this is all the stuff that it, it wants to do uh, to set up storybook. One thing that it does for us is it sets up the twig so that it actually loads twig into there. Basically, this entire thing is one big JavaScript file, um, but it loads in twig and uses it properly on there. And also sets up your uh, namespaces so that you have your atoms, molecules, templates. If you want to add another layer to that, you can. I just don't bother. Um, then it comes with the components, and this is, the, like I said, this is the compound one, so this is the base one. One of the things that it does is uh, it pulls in the color palette for you, um, and you'll notice that I have a dark mode that looks exactly like the light mode because I don't use dark mode. I know some people like it, but I don't, so I never really program for it. But you have that option, and if you look at this in the uh, inspector, it's actually really cool how it uses the colors because it actually creates all these color variables. Well, now I'm not seeing it. There they are. It actually creates these all as color variables, so you can actually just reference them singularly uh, by the name. And what basically, every time you reference a color, it uses a, uh, a uh, mix-in called, uh, you know, here, here are the different variables. And then here's the library, and then here's the used ones, and that uses this var function color choice, and then it actually pulls out the var of the color that you want to use. Uh, it's a pretty neat way to, to, to set up colors and set up uh, the, the, the dynamics colors, and then also it gives you the good color variables that you can reference by name. Instead of referencing it by the variable of blue or whatever, you can say, I want C background, and then as you can see up here, Here's that uh, 
the color there over there. Can people see that? Actually, I just realized as I'm looking at my screen, is that pretty small? Do you need it to be large, larger? Yeah. So, so yeah, that's uh, what it does with that. And then it comes with the, the buttons and then your links. It actually has its own menus area as well. These are the atoms. Uh, what the texts are going to look like as you do it uh, in the different uh, things, and that's all defined here in these uh, base atoms or the, these base things. Um, got your different atoms here, and as you, if you want to change this, um, this is uh, kind of what the default comes in with. If you want to look at what a component is, that's basically one folder with the twig, which has the twig information here. And this is actually what the output is at the end of the day. Uh, and then it's a story, which a story is the JavaScript that's being picked up by Storybook and, uh, and used. Um, and this is actually a, how it's defined. It pulls in, just like a, a JavaScript import, it, it imports or it pulls in the, the twig, twig itself. And then it exports it into uh, the, the default, which is what's sending it to a pattern or to a Storybook. You can title it whatever you want. You notice that how things are class atoms and, and teasers and different things. You can actually name it whatever you want. So say I don't want to use the word atoms, but I want to use Barry. Um, for some reason, I'm obsessed with calling things Barry. And now it's changing because I'm in, actually in the right folder. I'm very happy about that. <laughs> and now, actually, I have a new area called Barry that has my buttons. Um, so you can actually organize these the way in, in a way that makes sense to you, not based on... Uh, what some, somebody else is defining, uh, which I really appreciate. Um, and then you have your molecules, and this is the one that I was trying to change here, the blog teaser uh, earlier, right? It's, and this is all just dummy content here that I, that I have in, oh, sorry, I, 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 I digress. Um, it, we can add the controls here, basically setting up the different types of controls. And then we actually add the, the information that's we're passing into uh, the twig itself. Sometimes you'll notice that some of these have a YAML file, uh, which is another way to pass in the information. And if you take a look at the uh, images story, um, or it's the oh images story that <coughs> it's pulling in the YAML file and then passing that data straight up as a, as a data object. Um, it makes it a little bit easier to control the, the stuff. And the one thing that a lot of people uh, don't, or the, whenever I, I talk about this, is everything that's in the story has nothing to, is rewritable by, uh, by Drupal. So things that are gonna be in the story doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Uh, for instance, on my blog twig here that I had, um, I actually just copied and pasted what the, the real live stuff was. So I actually have the field stuff the, the, the field stuff here, but if I were going to pass that as a uh, as a, uh, a, a a variable, I could just pass that variable through there instead of using a block. And I'll get into blocks uh, here in a little bit. Um, so these are all the different things that I have, and then you know I name them as a single card. We got, I got the the this is the meet the dogs one. So if we take a look at this over here, wait, where is it? Stories. One, one, one second, let me just show this teasers to meet the dog. Uh, so it, this is the meet the dogs uh, one, and basically what it does is it pulls in the, the information. I have the YAML of the, the information here, which is just the summary. Um, I don't know why that's like that. I have a URL and all that, and then if you take a look at the twig, these are passed in through uh, meet the dogs and everything like that. So these are all the variables that are available to you when you're passing information to Drupal. Yes, sir. So, so I guess you need to create every time the stories that gives. So is there a scholar folding tool or you need to like always like create the structure of that? I always do it myself. There's, uh, but you can do multiple stories in one. You can actually attach, if you take a look at uh, uh, the images JS, uh, this actually does multiple stories in there because it exports it. it. It exports the the default of the area that it's in, and then you can add the different stories in there as, as well. Um, but it is three lines of code, so I, I never really had a problem with that. But I, I saw some other was more complex, 
like the, the JSON structure of the JavaScript object was way more complex than that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, can, it can be, but I mean, ultimately you're going to be replacing all this data, all the data, uh, when you call the the uh, the component from from Drupal itself. Yeah. Um, so that's that's kind of why that that is. Um, sure. So you get all these different things. You have the the, the tabs and everything like that, um, and. Uh, then you, it actually comes with these templates for Drupal, and it's actually, like I said, Compound finds out that you're using Drupal, so it creates base templates on there. And the one that it does come with is a contact one, uh, which I deleted, so that doesn't matter. Basically, what you're doing with this point, at this point, actually, I, I did uh, the blog teaser here. At this point, you're embedding your, tw your, your components into, uh, it, with the data from, from Drupal. And in this instance, uh, the blog teaser it required a label, so I passed the label from Drupal, which is the, the, all the variables. You, you always get this, these nice notes here as to what variables are accessible uh, on your basic page, pages and whatnot. Um, so you know what to call them. So the title is label, URL, we want to pass that. Uh, well, I'm actually passing the whole node structure into my, uh, my twi twig as well. Um, fun fact about this, though, since label is already available and already there, I actually don't need this line. And actually, I learned this re since I've done this. Because label is already a variable that's set, and then when the embed happens, the twig passes it by anyway. Um, so what you would want to do in this case is if you had a different label, say I named my variable Barry, um, and then uh, I wanted to pass it the variable label, then we'd have to do that. But since we have... Uh, label is equal label, you don't really need these guys here um, at all. So this entire section is unnecessary. Thanks, Mark. Good job. Um, I do want to also mention that these blocks come in. Basically, blocks in Twig are something that you use if you want to uh, replace entire blocks of content. And for if you take a look at the teaser.twig, I've created this block image and then put in this dummy image uh, field already that's there. This is actually going to be completely replaced and it is not going to go be, be part of Drupal at all. It's going to be when you use the block uh, d signification in, in the embed, um, it overwrites the blocks completely. And that's very important to know uh, because it's easier to put just like the content field image in there by itself instead of trying to like pass it through the data uh, of the embed. Um, you could also theoretically just use content filled image in here uh, in your in your in your twig, but then you'd have to write that all out yourself. So that's why I don't do it that way. Um, there's also one thing to note about embed: you can't put any other HTML or anything else inside it except for blocks. Uh, otherwise, Twig gets very very angry at you for doing that. Um, yes. The embed statement is that that's Twig. Core, is that part of Twig? That's part of Twig. The, 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 yeah, at this point we're just, we're just using Twig itself. The name spacing is that what's providing that, the app molecules? The app molecules for Drupal is actually provided, oh, that's a great question actually. That's provided by the uh, components module. It's a contributed module. And like I said when uh, in my, my slide here, it actually, you know, it actually requires the uh, the Drupal components uh, module. And then also the Emulsify, uh, Emulsify Twig is a helper module that the people at Emulsify uh, created. Um, so that's actually done, your, your namespaces are created in your uh, theme.info file. And if you scroll down here, it, this is actually where it, it calls the namespace and it says where the, the, names, the, the namespace itself and then where the path to that is. Um, so that you know where to, to find those different things. Although, you notice I added one here, paragraphs, but I'm actually not using it um, because for some reason I couldn't get to work and I just quit troubleshooting for some reason. Uh, I just started putting everything in molecules and that just made my life a little bit easier. Um, yes, that's me giving up. So, uh, let's see, where were we? What was that? I'm just explaining Twig. Oh, have you not worked with Twig yet? 
Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, the other the other option that you have is uh, an include, which is basically calling the uh, the um, the twig directly. But again, that passes all your variables. Everything that's being passed through when you include something gets passed to that as well. So you could use the field, uh, the, the content variable, and, and everything else like that. Uh, we started using this a, a little bit more heavy for one of our clients. Uh, and did, instead of trying to pass, some, uh, pass things through, we just use the content itself directly, uh, the, the variables that are, that are done. Because then you can use it in a pre-process variable, pre variable and everything like that. So, yeah, uh, the package.json file is in there, and that actually pulls in all the different things that are loading. A couple of things that are important to note. Um, it uses a, a, a custom twig loader, which is done by the people at Four Kitchens. The Mulsify is created by the people at Four Kitchens, for those that I failed to say that earlier. That's the, the people that are actually creating this product for us, um, and they use it pretty well. Um, uh, it's using Webpack and uh, SAS and all the different things. It has some post CSS actions going on. This is all already uh, created. The one thing that I really like that it uses is the BEM twig extension. And basically, what that is is everybody knows what BEM is, you know, the block element module. Well, this is actually a function in twig that allows you to use that, and that way you can. Uh, uh, Properly use, uh, properly add your different things. So this is actually what the BEM function looks like. You know, we've got a base element of uh, a blog teaser, and we have a the block is uh, content, and then I've got these two modifiers of image and berry. And if I take a look at that in here, these classes are applied to, uh, for me right here. So it actually generates the, the different BEM classes for us uh, properly. There's an, actually a fourth thing if you're using uh, something like um, uh, Bootstrap or Tailwind and you want to add those different ones, you could actually add an array of uh, MB1, which I don't have Bootstrap on this, so it's not going to make a difference, but it actually adds the uh, class um, on there as well uh, once we... Oh, yeah, it was on the content. So now it added that class for us. So it's a really great little helper function, and since it is a twig function, out, function that's being pulled in, you can actually use this in Drupal as well, uh, which makes uh, building out the, your twig files a little bit easier. And that's just if you're into, like, you notice I actually wrote this out instead of using the, uh, the BEM functionality there. Um, so there's that. Let's see. Why did I do this one? So after um, after you're done with that, actually, let me go ahead and create a new uh, thing here, and then do a fin start. To s This is still very much in progress, so please excuse me. This is loading up the Drupal instance and uh, it's like, oh, you know actually why it's very much in, I had to move from uh, VirtualBox to Docker Desktop and I forgot to back up my database mm -hmm. and so I had to start the import all over again. Fun times. Um, but so I have gray muzzle here. So now we have the gray muzzle doxel. Fire that up. This is what it looks like locally. And I should be logged in, yeah. And then this is pretty much what we're using as the different uh, uh, content. Um, paragraph items here are the different paragraphs that I was using. Here's a, a, a text card. So if I ever want to use the, uh, the that paragraph item, there should be a text card Here we go into the paragraphs, text HTML twig. This HTML twig just goes straight into uh, adding a text card molecule. So everything, 
in Drupal has a corresponding uh, land in, in, in the storybook and actually a, a corresponding component. Um, why it did embed instead of include here, I'm not sure, but that was two months ago. Um, so if we wanted to add a field to this, uh, uh, to this card, and all right, cool. Um, say we want to add a uh, image. Do I have an image? Okay. Do I have, already have a field image? Come on. Oh yeah, I do. There we go. Never mind. Good. Uh, say I'm adding an image to this text card, and I would just want to use the image. Uh, save settings. Now I can go ahead and create a page. And then add the paragraph text card. that image is, but I'm going to use it. You'll notice that the image actually doesn't show up on the page because right now we're using the text card uh, in here and it doesn't have a place for it at all because what it's doing is it's passing this inf information, um, labels coming from content title and then uh, the field body is happening. So what, if we want to add that to our uh, uh, our card here. So we're going to go to the uh, molecules text card. And we can actually add a, an image block. And actually, what I'm going to do is do this instead. Just to prove something to myself. So right here we have content filled image. In our uh, storybook nothing really happened. Um, let's go to molecules, context, no. Paragraphs, text, RT, see what's right. Few are my paragraphs. Am I missing? Oh yeah, I'm like just right, standing right by it. Right now, nothing's really happening because there's nothing in the um, in in content field card. So we can take the twig, create a new object called content, then field image. And sure, it doesn't look like an image there, but now that we've done that, we can use that, that change in there for our storybook, clearing the cache, because keep on clear, clear cache. And then once we go there, we can actually take a look at the high and gray muzzle, and we should actually get an image stuck in there. He says, hopefully, because he's live de demoing. Yeah. Although we actually got the image uh, as it's done in its. Uh, I didn't set up the view of it to actually show. I had it show the label, so we could change that. But that's pretty much how you would want to componentize uh, adding something to your paragraph. Um, and yeah, uh, any questions? Yes? So do you, I wasn't sure if this is because you're kind of testing it, but do you envision a way in which this would uh, uh, embed with uh, layout builder or layout paragraph or something like that for the content editor experience? Yeah, so then actually that's what that was. This is me embedding it with uh, paragraphs because that's basically what I added was a paragraph to, to there. Um, so you can use on the you can use it for blocks. Um, you can use it for layout builder blocks at, at, on top of that. Uh, it's just a way to organize your 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 information. So. Okay. Um, 
There was one, as you were asking that question, I thought of something and then I forgot what it was. So it'll, it, what ha it happens to me and I'll yell it out blankly and no one will know what I'm talking about. It'll be fine. Um, anything else? Yes. A stupid question. What's the difference between Storybook and Emulsify? Emulsify is the product that uses Storybook. So if you go, if we go to Emulsify.io, and Emulsify is more than Storybook. Uh, Emulsify uses Storybook uh, as its pattern library, uh, and uh, but it also has the different functionality to include it into Drupal, and it actually has a uh, WordPress build that they're doing. And then uh, there's also a Gatsby theme, which is different than a Drupal theme in that the Gatsby theme is like Storybook because it lays out exactly what all your different components were. And that's what I wanted to uh, mention uh, uh, before is that with Emulsify and uh, with the different systems that you can install or you can actually create your own. So you can create your own base system for your patterns and, or, and your different components as well. And you can store those up on, uh, on, uh, in GitHub and then pull them in directly, um, which, which will make your, it easier as your, as your pattern library grows uh, you can actually use it more uh, or, or quick get, get access to them a lot quicker. And you can actually install certain ones. Um, let's go here. Let's see. Uh, oh, shoot. It's not. So if I do a, a MVM version, the irony is that. Uh, Emulsify, I installed it on uh, with, with the latest version of Node, but then when you go into the uh, the folder itself, it changes to uh, version 16.4, um, just because there are some issues with the different uh, with Node SAS in the different versions of Node that haven't been caught up to date. It's kind of like with Drupal uh, making things uh, set to specific versions that are lower than the actual releases. Um, uh, so if I go NVM use node, it'll switch me back to there, and then I can go to emulsify. And this gives all the different commands that you can use on the uh, uh, on there. But if you take a look at, uh, oh, which one is the uh, emulsify component list? Oh, <laughs> because I did this before the command line came out, it doesn't know that this is an actual emulsify thing. So this is a bad example. Sorry. <laughs> wow. Okay. I should have tested that before. Um, but you can actually grab the different uh, libraries that, that you have available and then install them and then install each uh, a component I itself instead of in the entire uh, library of stuff. Yes? General knowledge question: um, Is Emulsify compatible with Pattern Lab? Are there any plans to make it if not? Probably not. Um, they actually Emulsify did use Pattern Lab before uh, and ripped it out and replaced it with Storybook. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Does anybody have any good lightning talks that they're going to do? That clock's super early. I did not take that shorter time. I freaked out that I only took 20 minutes. I'm like, ah. <laughs> Start dancing or something. I mean, it's not that that short, but all right. Well, I think that's my last slide too. So the lighter slide. Oh shoot! I don't know what I'm doing.